In this video, we will be discussing how to avoid logical errors, which are actions that a program does but are not intended by a programmer to happen in repetitive structures. The name of that process, as it is stated in the title, is loop validation. To perform that technique, we need to anticipate any bad input that could cause an error. For example, dividing by zero is something that is considered a mathematical error and a common mistake when it comes to doing arithmetic programs in any language. That is the example of a runtime error, which leads to the termination of a program. Next, we need to use Boolean statements and relational operators to test if the input is useful or valid. To do that, there are two paths. The first one is to use flags, which are Boolean variables that function the same way traffic lights do. If they are set to green, otherwise known as true, or red, otherwise known as false, the programmer can define if that variable will allow or not allow something to happen. The second one is the use of sentinels, which are the conditions of a loop to determine if the code in the inner loop will continue or not. To demonstrate the technique of loop validation, let us create a program that allows a user to print the ascending ladder that is at the end of Super Mario Bro levels with hashes. The challenge here is that the ladder that the user can print has to be between the height of 1 to 8 hashes. First, we need to import the scanner so that the user can write the height of the ladder. The next thing that the program will do is ask for the height through the terminal. Now, as the height could be any non-decimal number, we define it as a variable of the type integer. Let us remember that the height has to be between 1 and 8. For that, we can use a boolean variable called a flag and a do-while loop to let the user not continue to the rest of the program until the height is within the range. Let us initialize the flag to false and test if it continues to be false through the while conditional. We do this because we need to keep asking for the height until it is correct. We will use our scanner object inside of the loop. If we leave our code like that, what we will get is an infinite loop, as the flag never changes its value. Therefore, we need to set it to true at some point. We can do that by testing if the height is between 1 and 8. If that is the case, we set the flag to true and exit the loop. Now we can test it again, and as we can see, we avoid the common logical error, an infinite loop. As we now have the correct height from the user, we can start creating the ladder. For that, it is easier if we start printing a mirrored ladder that descends. Let us use a for loop that uses i less than height as the sentinel for the loop. Inside of it, we can print one hash and create a new line for each level. And now, we can test it. Now we need to print level number of hashes for each iteration. For example, on level 1, we will have one hash, and on level 2, we will have two hashes, and so on. As the phrase, number of hashes, implies, we will need to print the symbols repeatedly. We can use a for loop inside of the initial one for the height. In this case, the sentinel will change as we need to stop the printing of the hashes depending on a certain height, which is given by i. However, i can be any number from 0 to 7, and the height goes from 1 to 8. For that reason, our sentinel will be j less than i plus 1. And now we can test our code for height of 3. Nice, now we can proceed to transform our current ladder into the ascending one. As we can imply, the number of hashes do not change for the height or width of the levels. The only thing that we need to do is create the spaces to make the ascending ladder. For that, we can print dots and then change them to spaces for visual purposes. However, it is important to denote that the number of dots and hashes is inverted for each level. For example, in a ladder of height 7, there are 6 dots and 1 hash on level 1, one dot and six hashes on level six, and zero dots with seven hashes on the last level. Therefore, we need to print the dots level times minus one. However, the printing of dots also depends on height, which leads to the creation of another for loop and a variable k that will decrease over time. The variable will now be initialized with the height minus the current height minus one. The loop has to stop when k reaches zero after each decrementing. Therefore, the sentinel will be k greater than 0. We can now test the code for the height 5. Nice! If we change the dots for spaces and test the code for height 8, we can see that the correct use of loop validation 
helped us avoid common logical errors, such as infinite loops and create an object out of Mario's world. Wait, did you notice it? There's an error in the test for the height. We include a height of 9 even though the instructions requested that the ladder be from 1 to 8 levels. How about using another sentinel? Now, in the outer loop, we can test for the sentinel expression height greater than 8 and print a scolding phrase. To follow the instructions, we are going to break the flow of the whole ladder printing. For that, we can use a return statement. We can now test our code. And wow, now we have a nice program to print a two-dimensional staircase. I hope this was helpful, and happy coding!